This is not only a health concern, but is intrinsically linked with social justice, human rights, and gender equality. Girls have the right to access to health, education, and dignity. But when they cannot manage their menstruation with, in, a, with, in, in, in a safe and secured manner, then they are truly being denied and deprived of these rights. We have Ms. Fatiha Ayat. She's from Bangladesh and run, uh, runs her own organization named Child ND. Uh, her work is situated at the intersection of climate, health, information, learning and development. She advocates for children, youth inclusion and gender parity. For the next question uh, for Fatiha, as a young person, how do you see your perspective on WASH and adequate menstrual hygiene management? Over to you, Fatiha. Thank you for asking me this question. Um, as an 11-year-old child rights activist, I have seen firsthand how menstrual hygiene management can have an effect on girls' education, health, and well-being. In many parts of the world, girls do not have access to clean water, sanitation facilities, or adequate menstrual hygiene products. This means that they have to resort to unhygienic or even potentially dangerous methods to manage their periods. This is surely a period poverty. As Lynn has already mentioned, this is not only a health concern, but is intrinsically linked with social justice, human rights, and gender equality. Girls have the right to access to health, education, and dignity. But when they cannot manage their menstruation with, in, a, with, in, in, in a safe and secured manner, then they are truly being denied and deprived of these rights. Let me give an example of a 14-year-old girl named Parul who lives in a small countryside village in Borishal in Bangladesh and does not know how to manage her periods effectively. When she first started menstruating, she did not have access to clean water, sanitation facilities, or menstrual hygiene products. This meant that she had to use old rags, leaves, or even mud to manage her period. As a result, she suffered from serious infections and missed school during her period. She felt ashamed and embarrassed and did not feel comfortable talking to anyone about her menstrual health, which could have led to serious health problems and caused social stigma. This is just one example of how menstrual hygiene management and lack of access to wash facilities can have a direct impact on girls' lives. In many countries around the world, including Bangladesh, a culture of silence creates barriers for adolescent girls to manage their periods in a safe and distinguished manner. In many cultures, menstruation is still seen as a taboo subject, and girls often feel ashamed and humiliated about this. As a result, they uh, cannot seek the help and resources that they need to manage their periods. So what can we do about this? As an 11-year-old child AIDS activist, I am raising awareness about the importance of menstrual hygiene management. I am trying to advocate for better wash facilities in uh, rural areas, in developing countries, and also in schools and in public places. I am trying to advocate for distributing for providing people for providing young people and girls with clean water and sanitation facilities reaching them with a period education and distributing sanitary products and what can we do collectively about this well i think that we can have open conversation about this to break the taboo around menstruation Targeted interventions can have a direct impact in their lives. We must empower girls to take control of their own well-being and menstrual hygiene. And we can do this by reaching them with the direct resources, information, and support. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Fatiha, for bringing the importance of uh, menstrual hygiene management and the example of Haro, uh, which is very, very important for us to hear here. Thank you so much. We are now coming to the final like segment of the questions. Um, so the general question we had for this, uh, this segment was, how can policymakers best engage young innovators and networks as key partners in negotiating holistic and impactful water agreement? Um, over to you, Fatiha. Well, I think that policymakers can best engage young innovators and networks as key partners in negotiating holistic and impactful water agreements by creating spaces for their participation and valuing their perspective. I can give an example of this. In 2016, a platform for young people to participate in water-related discussions and decision-making processes named Bangladesh Water Youth Parliament, or BWYP, was formed. And one notable success of the BWYP is the development of a youth-led water policy. In 2018, the parliament organized a national consultation on water policy where young people from all across the country came to discuss their perspectives on water management and policy making. And the consultation resulted in a youth-led water policy, which was later submitted to the government for consideration. And also, I think policymakers should recognize the importance of technolo technology and innovation in water management and should support initiatives that encourage young people to develop and implement new solutions. This can be through providing funding and mentorship opportunities, as well as leveraging the power of digital tools and data that improve water management practices. And I think it's also important for policymakers to prioritize inclusive and equitable water agreements that benefit all stakeholders, especially, especially marginalized and vulnerable communities. And at the same time, young people can play a crucial role in promoting these values and representing the needs of the under, underserved communities. Thank you. Thanks so much, Fateha, for flagging the excellent example, uh, especially on the youth-led water policy. 